So it wouldn't be right if I didn't pick out one of the things that I have learned as marketing. So launching my own business, I guess because I've always worked in sales and marketing, it has been, I guess, the cornerstone for everything that we do. So when I've launched, I knew how important it was to market ourselves. And because we are a marketing agency ourselves, I can't really launch a business if I'm not practicing what I preach. So from day one, we have heavily invested in our marketing, which I think has predominantly been the reason that we have grown so quickly. So I not only employ probably, well, at some stages, more than quarter of the agency or more, more than quarter of my business has been the sales and marketing team. So we've invested in terms of staff, but we've also invested heavily in terms of the technologies and the marketing technologies that we use, and also the amount that we spend on driving that out through other platforms. So our marketing spend and PPC and other things. So I would say that is probably one of my biggest learnings as a business is, you know, depending on what you do, obviously I do marketing, I have treated myself exactly like I would treat a client. I have invested in marketing and it has meant that we have had very, very fast growth. In year one, uh, we did, I'm just gonna be totally honest about our facts and figures, we turned over a couple of hundred thousand pounds. We had three X growth uh, in year two and we are due to, double our growth again this year and that's going to be the plan for the next couple of years onwards and a big part of that is down to the amount of marketing content that we put out. So as well as marketing, the second thing that maybe is a lesson learned from not doing it as quickly as I should have done in the first place. So we did really well with our marketing, attracting lots and lots of new clients. We've been putting content out regularly through the podcast, the webinar, using the email marketing systems that we had. So we had a strong amount of new clients coming to us without us even having to do really any sales outreach. What I hadn't realized quickly enough is how quickly I would need to recruit staff. So although we had lots of people coming to us because they had seen our you know, content, our marketing content and liked what we were doing. And I guess I put myself at the front of our brand a lot of the time. So people engaged with us and we were getting people applying for jobs that maybe we didn't even have advertised at the time. I was probably a little bit scared to employ people because I was worried about cash flow and I didn't want to grow too quickly, which did mean uh, for a little time last year, we probably had more clients than we could deal with to a certain extent. I don't, hopefully our clients wouldn't say that, but we were growing so quickly in terms of bringing new business into the business, but we weren't necessarily recruiting at the same rate. So a huge lesson learned for me from doing it wrong is that you need to treat your recruitment process exactly the same as your new business or sales process to attract you know, and sell your product or your services to potential clients or customers. You need to do the same in terms of employee advocacy and really putting content out into the market that's gonna attract amazing, con uh, amazing content, that's going to attract amazing people um, as well. So the content can serve you in two ways. It can serve you from a recruitment of new clients and new business, but it can also serve you to attract amazing talent as well. So something else that comes quite naturally to me is being very action focused. I literally take no time to make decisions. If I feel something is the right thing to do, I do it very, very quickly, which works brilliant for me as a business leader, but it probably does quite often put a fair bit of pressure on my staff. So I think one lesson is be action focused. If you're going to do something, do it quickly, whether that's taking something to market, you know, fail fast, do it as quickly as you possibly can, push it out to market and you know, judge how the market is receiving it. The other thing, I guess, which is a, a learning within the same learning is you do need to think about the other personalities in your organization. So that works for me. I really enjoy change as lots of founders do, but some of my staff 
have slightly different personality types to me so they need to be taken on that journey in a different way so we've actually spent quite a bit of time doing training and learning about all of the different personality types that we have within the business so that we know how to work together better to get the most out of each other and when we're making quick decisions making sure that we're taking people along that journey in the right way without them having to feel stressed or worried about it. So another big thing is uh, many of you that know me will already know this, that I'm a single mum and I have been since my daughter's about a year old. So for me, launching my own business was quite a big risk to take, you know, two and a half years ago when I decided to do it. But what it has enabled me to do is become a lot more in control of my time and my life. So although in some ways I'm busier than I've ever been, what I am really trying to do now, especially now I have more staff and people in my team, is pull myself away from the business more so that I have a better balance because I am very naughty and I will work too much and I will get in trouble with my daughter uh, because well, she's now 13, um, because I will you know, tie myself to the desk and work more than I could or should. So I think being a founder of a business and certainly a sole founder of a business, I've seen a huge change in the last year. We have 13, 14 staff now, and the difference between that and where we were a year ago when I had three or four staff, it means that I have to do, or I don't need to do as much, not I have to do less. I don't have to do as much because I have recruited people who are, I must say, incredible at their jobs, a lot of them better at the jobs that they do than I could ever be. So I think for me, being a founder has really helped me have a better balance in life and given me a lot more freedom, certainly as a single mum, to balance my life and balance my time. So when I was employed, there were lots of things that employers that I worked for did that maybe I didn't agree with. So when I've launched my own business, I really took it as an opportunity to create the kind of company that I would love to work for if I was an employee. And a lot of that has come down to creating freedom. And I guess in a way, the freedom to fail, but I must say all my staff are amazing and none of them have failed. So various different things that I have implemented because I was a single working mum for a long time, having a four day week for all of the staff um, so we do do 34 hours, but across four days, so very, very slightly longer days maybe than, than other businesses may do. So we do four longer days and that gives the staff that extra day, you know, to go and get their hair done or go and phone the gas people or whatever it is that you need to do, you know, go and pop the delivery back to the post office. But it gives them that extra breathing space so that when they're at work, they're able to really focus on their work. The other thing that I think the pandemic has helped with and was always something that was on my agenda, but I think has just been heightened because of the world that we're all now living in, is flexible working in terms of where you're working from. So none of my staff are required to come into the office. We do have this wonderful space that we're in at the moment, Barclays Eagle Labs. Um, we have an office that we will have eight of our staff based in but we do have staff in London and Milton Keynes and Winchester and various other locations across the UK so no one is required to come into the office I encourage collaboration and I think it's great for them to come into the office we do have some staff that want to come in every day some staff that live too far away to come in every day that will just come in one day a week some that will come in no days a week and just come in you know once a month or very occasionally but we have a flexible working space that enables and gives everyone the freedom to work in the way that works best for them and I think that's been a real big game changer you know employers and founders of businesses or MDs etc understanding that you don't need to be you know breathing down the neck of your staff they are if you've got brilliant staff and you give them the freedom, they will work brilliantly. And I think it's just enabled us to actually work harder. It's given us better productivity because there's sometimes less time 
chit-chatting over a coffee, although I actually do believe that chit-chatting over a coffee is a really helpful thing sometimes. So yeah, it's given us a lot of room, I think, for people to excel and work in the way that works best for them, and especially running a kind of creative marketing business, we really need that within our business. So it, again, I think that's been a big part of our you know, growth is enabling the staff to have the freedom and work in a way that works for them.